I'm Swiss. I was born in Biel, which is north of Bern, in 59. So I was a journalist before I started building boards by accident because there was nothing around when we started in 78. Together with a friend, we built our first boards that winter. I was still working as a journalist, freelance, so I got to know some people in the windsurfing industry very early on. And Hawaii for the Pan Am Cups in 79, 80, 81, then we started shaping professionally in 82. Head designer, high fly, Helmut Kirner, hired me to run the shop in, on Lake Garda. And when high fly went belly up in 85, that's when the, the collaboration with F2 started. And that lasted for a while, like 17 years. And since 2004, I do my own thing. Uh, the Thomann brand, I mean, I make custom boards under my own name. And uh, Brunati is a Dutch company who started out as a windsurfing company in 79 as well. Carlo Brunati was a guy making custom boards. It's more of an image thing for them to connect their brand back to the roots. We'll see what happens with that. I definitely concentrate on my own stuff. I was living in Hawaii for a couple of years, but I had to move back to be closer to my kids who live in France. I needed a place to build my boards. I didn't want to have my own shop. I was looking for somebody who would accommodate me, somebody who had a CNC machine that allows me to do most or all my design work wherever I am. If you can go skiing in the morning, design your boards in the afternoon and send the file, and then come to Slovenia and it's built and then you do the finishing. So, and I don't have to deal with people. People. I'm yeah. a lousy yeah. boss, I'm too nice. I mean, obviously the first who comes to mind is Bjorn, don't be back. When I was working with High Fly, that's when I started working with professional uh, windsurfers, like uh, Bjorn Schrader, I mean the whole High Fly team. Then F2, he moved to F2 as well, then Bjorn came on board, Axel Ohm, Mark Tanner, Anik Ravlin from Canada, it was my first world champion title, and uh, some people from the US, uh, Jimmy Diaz. Throughout the years, Jason Polakov, the guy who basically made the brand happening. Josh Stone, name it, I mean, pretty much everybody. The relationship with Bjorn was very special because I started working with him when he was a kid, like 15 when I met him. We traveled quite a bit and uh, spent a lot of time together, so that was definitely a special relationship. Yeah. There's a few people I, I really enjoyed working with, like especially Peter Fullwater. He was probably my, my favorite. And uh, Ant Baker, uh, Nick Baker's brother, unbelievably talented. He could be a golf pro. He could do everything. You wouldn't tell when you look at the guy, but he is really super light on his feet. I started working with Levi when uh, F2 started that Maui project thing. He's a really, really good guy. Nice person, smart. In my opinion nowadays, probably the best windsurfer, wave rider. Robbie, I met him the first time in Kailua in 79, just when he had his first daughter. Yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty good. <laughs> then when it comes to the really big waves, Jason is still Jason the best, the hands down. Hasn't changed since, eight, since 81. When I started working with him, he was like 18. When you see him sail the really big shit, pff, ridiculous. His timing is just from another world. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs>Sometimes one board is enough, sometimes it takes ten boards. You know, doing it is actually, that's of non-importance. It's all about knowing what you want, and then you just do it. And then you see how close you came to your expectations. The first board is usually very close to what you want, because that's the board that gets all the attention, that gets all the thinking, all the ev evaluation. Emotions. I watch people sail, I listen to what they want, what they want to do, want to feel on a board. I listen a lot. The critic on, on one thing, what does the board do well, what could be better. Every board is a compromise, by definition. I, mean, it's, I can make probably 20, 80 liter wave boards and they, will, they can all be good, but different.
When he comes back and says, and he's really happy, then I did what I was supposed to do. If he comes back and says it doesn't work for him, then you start questioning yourself, obviously. Depending what it is, you also kind of start wondering what the hell the, the guy is doing. But if that's what he feels, who am I to tell somebody that he is not right? A lot of that is fashion as well. Some good guys uh, riding this type of board, so then everybody thinks that they need that as well. Quite often they don't need it, because most people can't actually use it properly, and they would be better off on something more easier to sell, that they can actually exploit. What's the fun of being on a stick that you can't really use properly? Not much has changed, really. There's still a lot of people who don't really know what the hell they're talking about. That goes with the sporting industry in general. Every period, every time has the talented ones and the not-so-talented ones. Nothing changes, really. Just different people, same shit. I wouldn't think so. The sailors got better. That's the main change. The talent drives the development. If 20 years ago I would have had a board like we do today, nobody would have been able to sail it. So it's not, no point, you know, so innovation grows out of what people can do. So the equipment gets more and more specialized, more and more radical, which is fine, but those are the pros. Those are the guys who spend every freaking minute on the water. What they are using might not be the best board for somebody who goes sailing on vacation or over the weekend. It's like on skis, you know. On a FIS GS racing ski, I can ski for about, what, half an hour? Then I'm toast, I'm done. Give me a regular public, like a hero or something like that, and can ski all day. And in windsurfing it's a bit the same thing. Uh, lately I haven't sailed much, I have to say. First because I lived in the mountains, so uh, not far away from Marseille, so I sailed in the south of France. Before I used to live in La Ciotat, which is east of Marseille, close to uh, La Coudoulière, Almanar. Not at all. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to spend holidays in, in Portoroche. That's, that's all I know. Portoroche, Piran, Istria. I still remember the, those places, but I've never sailed there. Maui, hands down. My favorite place to wave ride is actually the outer reef. Further down the coast, it's called Spartans Reef. No, I never really wanted to. Uh, it's too much of a hassle because you need people, you need the boats, you need all this shit. The very, 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 very first year. They're racing, obviously. I mean, that's not my game. I, I'm fairly competitive, but it's like playing chess. And you make the equipment, you play with it. I don't think so, no. The interesting thing about foiling is that it's totally different from any other watercraft. Like in boats and in kiting, foils enlarge the spectrum to the high wind side, to the speed side. And in windsurfing, it's the opposite. It makes the low end more interesting. It doesn't go fast. I think there's something totally wrong with it. Don't ask me what, it's not my game, but everybody I talk to, when they're hitting 30 knots, they're shitting their pants. It's scary. And 30 knots on a windsurf is a piece of cake. So in theory, foils will be faster, but not the setup we see right now. There will be some changes coming. I know some people are interested in getting windsurfers on foils and fast. Sure, I mean, look at the stand-up market. I mean, people are buying, people are happy with them. It's not a high performance and will never be a high performance thing, but it's reasonably cheap, easy to store. So yeah, why not? It's not the latest passion. I grew up in Switzerland, so I, I learned to ski when I was like three years old. Then when I started to work in the windsurfing industry, I totally quit. Didn't ski for about 15 years. When I moved to France, then I slowly started to ski a little bit more. And once you're back on it, got to do it. I really like it, love it, especially powder stuff. Thank you, welcome, and to all the members of the style team, aloha.